Hip-Hops is 1987.com. about you know our group our players um, and I think there's seven guys coming back and eight new guys uh, looking forward to you know continuing to work and um, you know grow uh, the guys that are returning and integrating uh, those guys that are new you know including um, you know our first round pick John Collins and Tyler Dorsey and you know all the way up to the Dwayne Deadmonds and Luke Babbitts and Miles Plumley and Marco Bellinelli, you know, all the new guys, um, just excited about, you know, in integrating them into our culture, integrating them into our player development, and, you know, ultimately how we play as a team. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, just uh, the, the, the way we play and the way we compete um, every night has uh, always been our standard and will continue to be our standard. And, um, you know, I kind of referenced the daily improvement that we want our players to make every day. Um, you know, that's how our team's going to improve uh, from the start of the year to the end of the year. A lot of it is through uh, player development and individual development. And I think the unselfish way with which we play, um, you know, continues to be something we take a lot of pride in. And uh, the expectations for this year uh, will be the same. And, you know, it's great to have some guys uh, that understand that, that can carry that message in the locker room, you know, in the practices as we head up to Athens and the University of Georgia for our camp. Um, you know, and, and obviously a great coaching staff that, um, you know, is, is invaluable to me as, uh, as we start training camp and, uh, you know, uh, this, this uh, exciting time of the year and, and into the NBA season. So uh, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Good morning. Terrell Thomas, Hip Hop's in 1987. What will be the goal tomorrow as training camp gets underway? With there being so many new players and veterans players, what will be the goal or, or the goal that you'll be setting for the team tomorrow? Yeah, you know, I think uh, defense is always something that uh, we've taken a lot of pride in. And I think, you know, any team that wants to have some success and wants to be good, uh, your priority and, and the first thing that uh, you probably talk about, the first thing you work on is establishing a defensive identity. And um, you know, been a part of a lot of training camps, and tomorrow we'll feel a lot like that. We'll look a lot like that. And the goal of you know the guys understanding um, how important it is for us to be good in defense, on defense, and all the you know details that go with that. Uh, you know, and then I think you know obviously you got to start putting in you know offense and, and hopefully some concepts and some points of emphasis, and um, just start building your foundation blocks, building your habits for uh, for the season. Well, you know, I think it's, it's always uh, about team defense for us. I think, you know, we have to have, you know, everybody participating, uh, everybody working together. Um, and I think, you know, um, defense and, and I, you know, I guess maybe more specifically the paint, I think it's actually been an area of strength for us. And you know, I think we have a lot of uh, Dwayne Dedman and Miles Plumley, and, um, you know, Irsan returning and Muskie returning and, uh, you know, John Collins and Luke Babbitt, those guys, uh, you know, they're going to understand their roles and what they need to do, and the small guys will understand how they need to help them. And I think it's always about team for us and protecting the paint and being good defensively in the paint is going to be about all five guys that are on the court. Brandon? Coach Brandon, thanks for taking the fan. Uh, your thoughts on uh, the development of Dennis? Uh, the team is different now uh, from what it was when he first came into the league. And what are your expectations for him uh, this upcoming season? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been, um, you know, I think great for all the fans, for everybody to, to watch the growth and the development of Dennis Schroeder, um, you know, from a, a rookie drafted, you know, I guess four years ago to, you know, now being our starting point guard and um, the person that's been here with, with the Hawks and with myself the longest. And I think, you know, the biggest expectation is for him to continue and to improve, to continue to get better. Um, you know, we feel like he has a very, very bright future. Um, you know, I think there's lots of kind of X and O type coach type stuff that, you know, I don't think I need to bore you guys with. But I think, 
you know, just overall, um, I think how he's improved, um, you know, as a leader and as a teammate has been something that's, you know, put him in a position to, you know, be really important to our locker room and important to, you know, how we um, navigate the season and um, push, push through and push forward. So, but uh, his improvement has just been, uh, it's been special to watch and I know he's excited about continuing to improve. You know, we, we met for a little bit before we, you know, came over here this morning. And, you know, I, I think it's a conversation that, you know, the whole country's having. Um, I'm, I'm assuming most, if not all, teams are having. And at the end of the day, I think our players are, um, you know, incredible, um, you know, human beings and thoughtful. You know, I think we just encourage them to, to think deeply about what's happening in our country, to care deeply about not just what's happening, but about our country. And um, I think if they do those two things, if they think deeply and they care deeply, um, you know, our country will be a better place, our conversation will be a better place, or in a better place. And um, most importantly, they have my support, they have the organization's support um, to express themselves or not to express themselves in any way uh, that they feel is important. Um, their their experiences have shaped their lives. Um, they're they're really unique people, um, and they have a lot to offer and a lot to say in some cases. And they have our full support. Coach, what are your expectations for John this year? I know that you know this is his rookie season, so it'll be a lot on his plate this season. But with with Paul gone, with the White Howard gone. As we were mentioning before, the, the middle, there will, there will be a need for someone to step up. Dwayne Detman, of course, is a veteran in the league, but John will have the chance to possibly become an NBA superstar. What are your, what are your expectations for that young man in his rookie year? Well, you know, it, it's, it's a lot like our team. You know, I think John's uh, development and John achieving, you know, all the, the things that, that he wants and that we want for him is going to come down to, you know, how he comes in every day, how he works every day. Um, you know, how he kind of uh, fits into a team and, and plays, you know, the, the, way, uh, the way we talked about earlier, you know, his unselfishness, his competitiveness, all those things will dictate, um, you know, what kind of season he has. And um, I think our expectation is just that he, you know, competes at a high level, he works at a high level, and uh, he, he begins to understand, you know, how we play and how the NBA game is played. Yeah, we were very excited about having Marco Bellinelli. Um, it's, he's like one of those guys that, at least me personally, I've always wanted to coach and wanted to have on a, a team that I was with. And he and I kind of laugh, and we finally have it happen. So um, just, you know, I think his role, um, you know, particularly as an offensive player, um, you know, I, I think he's unique in how he can score and how he can play pick and roll, but the way he moves off the ball his cutting, his slashing, his IQ. Um, it's just, it's, it's, uh, I think it's unique. And, you know, we've always had a lot of success with, um, you know, European players and maybe a little bit of a European type style of play. And uh, there's nobody that knows or understands that better than Marco. And so um, I think it's a great fit and just very excited about having him uh, with our group. Like coaching, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, I have a great passion for and, um, you know, but I think, you know, part of coaching is, is always building a team and how do teams fit together and, but, you know, to have uh, just undivided attention on coaching and undivided attention on, you know, what we can be doing in practice, what we can be doing in film sessions and our player development program and all those things. Um, you know, and probably freed me up to take a breath too. So um, it's it's been great. Um, you know, very excited about this year going forward and um, where our organization is going.
summer camp or something like that where everyone's trying to get used to playing the more new guy? Um, I mean, I think it's, it's interesting how much turnover there are on NBA teams. And, you know, I guess some years there's more than others. Uh, but there's always a, you know, I guess a process of, of getting back together and integrating, you know, whether it's only one or two or three guys or, you know, seven or eight. And, um, you know, I think a lot of it starts with their work in the summer. Uh, these guys have been working incredibly hard, um, you know, in open gym and, you know, volunteer type workouts, volunteer situations. And so I think they're already um, have taken, you know, one or two or three or 10 huge steps forward just by the work they put in in September. And then, you know, you go to training camp and, um, you know, it goes to a whole nother level there and it's pretty intense and then through the preseason. But, um, you know, I think we've got a nice mix uh, with some veteran guys that have either, you know, been with us or been on other good teams, good situations that, you know, I think we're, um, we're hopeful that the guys can, um, you know, learn how to play together and learn, you know, what we want to do here and what's going to give us our success quickly. Larisha Harris here with CBS Radio Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, you guys aren't really in a home right now. Phillips Arena under renovation and your practice facility not ready to be open yet. Your thoughts on how the facility, facility is going to look, um, what you're expecting from both Phillips Arena and the practice facility? Yeah, we, we can't be more excited about everything that's happening with, um, you know, not just the arena, but, you know, as you mentioned, the, 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 the new practice facility. And so not, not maybe having a home, um, you know, as far as a practice facility for another 10 days, two weeks, whatever it may be. Um, you know, we've waited a long time for this, so I think we can wait a, a couple more weeks. But the, the new practice facility is going to be a game changer for us, uh, most importantly for our players. You know, I think uh, as you guys kind of hear me just, you know, kind of beat it and beat it and talk about it, you know, the player development is so important to us and having a first class uh, practice facility, you know, we feel like it's just going to enhance our player development program and give our players, you know, opportunities and ways to, you know, hopefully improve even more and more rapidly. So, and the, and the new arena, you know, I think, uh, you know, for the players and the fans, I think, you know, everybody's just excited to see about, um, you know, what it's going to look like this summer or, or going into this next season. And, you know, I think there's even more excitement about going into the 18 season and, you know, when both phases of the arena renovation are done. And, um, you know, our fans deserve the best. You know, I think just like our players, um, you know, we feel like we're doing that with the practice facility. You know, hopefully our fans are going to feel the same way coming to the arena um, this season. But, you know, especially starting at 18, um, I think it's going to be a unique and special place and um, a place where our fans love coming to watch a game and our players love playing. Deshaun Tate, CBS Atlanta, 92.9 The Game. Considering the recent um, changes within the roster as of late, uh, what is your initial response to those who – uh, I guess, may feel like they have low expectations for the Atlanta Hawks this season? Yeah, you know, for the most part, luckily, um, most of us, I think, live in our own little world and teams tend to just kind of bunker in and we know what's happening um, on our practice court. We know what's happening in our film sessions and in our games and, you know, our expectations of, of ourselves, I think, are significantly more important than, you know, what people on the outside expect of us. and. It's kind of wasted time to think about or worry about, um, you know, what anybody else is expecting of us. So, you know, I think uh, a lot of the things that, uh, you know, we've been doing, probably a lot of us since we started playing basketball and coaching basketball, is, you know, how are we coming to work every day? What are we doing in the gym? How are we preparing? You know, that, that's, gonna, that's, that's where our expectations are. And if you're doing those things, um, you know, more often than not, uh, you can feel good about what's happening on the court. And, um, you know, it just continues to be our focus is what, what are we doing every day? How are we getting better every day? And, you know, that's where our focus and our expectations are. Playing for some basketball insiders. Um, according to NBA.com, last season, Dwight Howard and Dennis Schreer ran fewer than 100 pick and rolls together. So I've got kind of a three-part question. Did you run, run the pick and roll as much as you wanted to last season? How much do you anticipate running it this season, making it an emphasis? And can you give your analysis of Dennis, uh, Dennis as a pick and roll ball handler? It's a lot for me. <laughs> you won't bore um, us with the uh, yeah. So uh, I, I won't bore you guys. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think 
you know, um, as far as the number of pick and rolls we ran last year, uh, you know, I, I think going into the season, there was maybe a, a thought or a, an emphasis on maybe playing a little more inside out. But I wouldn't say uh, a plan or, or a significant shift or a significant change. So I, I would guess and feel like we played a ton of pick and roll last year and about where we wanted to be. Um, you know, who was in them and, and the numbers. Um, you know, it's the way we play, it's, a lot of it's random. A lot of it's uh, through reads and through um, just opportunities. And, and the more pace and the more aggressive you are um, and the more um, with which you move, the more you may be involved in pick and rolls or different things. So, um, you know, I know the third one was, was Dennis as a ball handler. What was the second part? The, just how much you anticipated doing emphasizing it this, this year. Yeah, so, you know, similar to last year where I would say there wasn't a, there was maybe a, a slight, uh, you know, shift or, or emphasis or adjustment to maybe trying to play inside out more. This year I would say there's probably going to be, um, you know, slight shift towards, um, you know, even greater space, even greater pace, and even more pick and rolls. Um, but not losing, I think, the, the movement we have away from the ball and the cutting and screening and um, opportunities for everybody to to participate in the offense, uh, much like you've seen, you know, for the, for the last four years. Um, but, you know, maybe some, some shift towards more. Uh, I would say some shift towards even greater pace, playing even faster. Um, and then lastly, just Dennis as a pick and roll, you know, ball handler. You know, I think the the with his speed and how he puts uh, pressure on the rim and the way he can attack and get defenses to collapse, um, you know, is a big part of our offense. It's a big part of our league. You know, his speed is just very unique and special. And so how do we create, an, you know, even more environments, even more opportunities for him to use his speed, you know, not just in pick and rolls, but, you know, maybe in other situations and other, um, you know, schemes and environments. Uh, but his speed and his ability to get to the paint, pick and roll, is, is unique, and that, that opens up a lot for his teammates and for himself. Coach uh, Taylor Bain, uh, Kevin Taylor of Taylor Bain Sports. Let's talk about uh, Torian and uh, DeAndre's development going into year two. Yeah, uh, you know, it, I think it was great for, you know, the coaches and for his teammates, and I'm sure Torian to see, you know, him kind of reap the benefits of, of all the work he put in for the first you know, 60 to 70 to 75 percent of the season. And, you know, it's not easy when you're not playing. It's not easy when, um, you know, I think we're very aggressive and, and very, um, you know, forward thinking in how we use the G League. And both of those guys, you know, spent time in the G League. And we think that's invaluable for their growth and development. And to see Torian, you know, emerge and, you know, start for, I don't know, whatever it was, the last 15, 20 games. And, and a playoff series and for him to play really efficiently and for him to play, you know, for a rookie, um, you know, he was a great contributor for us. So I think going into the second season for Torian, we just want to see that carry over. Um, you know, I think there's steps to a player's development. There's, it's a process. And if you start skipping those steps, um, sometimes it can eat, lead to a regression. So, you know, I think uh, uh, Torian wants to be great. Torian really wants to you know, have a big impact on the game on both ends of the court. And, you know, in some ways, we're probably just going to have to keep, you know, reminding him and reminding ourselves that it's a process and it's going to take, you know, incremental improvement, incremental steps. But I think because of what he went through, he understands that and appreciates that. DeAndre, you know, I think had, you know, great moments last year, great flashes, you know. I remember him, you know, guarding, you know, Harden and, and Houston in the fourth quarter and different games having big impact. And then I think he's had a great summer. Uh, he's put a lot of time in working in the gym. Um, you know, very good in summer league. So I think both of those guys do a lot of things that we value. You know, the biggest thing I think they can impact the game on both sides of the ball. And um, we're excited about watching them grow and take those steps forward. Coach Paul Newberry from Associated Press. Uh, you mentioned like not you know having the same expectations for the players in terms of what you know the work ethic and what they do and kind of blocking out the outside expectations. But how, how can you be kind of uh, optimistic when you've obviously lost so much, you know, points, rebounds, you look at the stats and, and a lot of guys obviously, I mean, it looks like a, to anybody on the outside, a, a pretty long, painful rebuild is beginning here. Um, how, 
how is there, uh, what reasons for you to have uh, optimism about at least these next couple of years? Well, you know, I, I think the, the thing that, you know, you've heard us, all of us talk about this, you know, I think each year is when you genuinely believe in player development, when you genuinely believe in your team getting better from the start of the season to the end of the season, um, I think it's a big reason uh, that a lot of us coach and a lot of us play. And, um, you know, I think we're all competitive. And, you know, when it comes to the games, um, you know, we're going to lay everything on the line. We're going to give it everything we got. And, um, you know, hope, we hope through the work and through the player development, through the individual development, that the results are going to be um, something that we're all proud of and, you know, that I think we can, uh, you know, maybe there's a, some degree of underestimation of who we are and what we can be. But I think, um, you know, if, if you kind of appreciate and, and actually enjoy and embrace the process, of whether you're, you know, winning NBA championships or, um, you know, you're winning 60, 55, 50 games or you're in a different phase of your organization and you're growing and developing um, and laying, you know, the foundation for something that you think can be special. Um, that process can be incredibly rewarding, you know, I think not just for the organization but for players and for coaches and everybody that's involved in it. Um, if, if you're just focused on you know, the end result, you're probably going to have a frustrating year. But I think if you embrace, um, you know, what you go through every day and how you work every day, there's a lot you can be taken from that. Uh, Gary McKillops from AP Radio. Just kind of a general question, but many of the other sports seem to be having problems with either ratings or attendance or whatever, yet the NBA continues to be on, on a roll. What do you think the NBA is doing right that maybe some of these other leagues are not? Well, I'm incredibly biased. I think it's just a, a great sport. I think it's, you know, <laughs> amazing to watch. And, you know, the athletes and the players are so skilled and so talented. Uh, and it's funny, I love, I love all sports. So I'm not that biased that I don't watch others. I just, I think basketball and, and the players and the things they're able to do, it's just, there's sometimes where I sit there and say, I have an amazing seat to watch these guys play basketball. And, so I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, some of that carries over to our fans. And um, I think we're all to some degree in awe of what these guys can do. And, you know, I do think, um, you know, our players represent themselves in an incredibly, um, you know, professional, high character, quality way. Um, there's just a lot of great stories in our league, a lot of great players with a great message, you know, not just on the court, but off the court. Our league does an incredible job of, I think, um, you know, keeping us moving forward, hopefully being on the edge of what fans and what people want next and how they're viewing the game and how they're viewing the sport and how they're viewing our players. Um, you know, I think it's, it's like anything. It starts at the top. Adam Silver's an amazing commissioner and um, goes down through the league, go through the owners. I think there's a lot of great owners, you know, including ours here in Atlanta. There's just, you know, I think there's a great a great synergy between the ownership and, and the league office, ownership and, you know, the organizations. Um, you know, it's just, I think the league's in a good place and a ton of the credit just goes to the players. They're, you know, like I said, I'm, I feel like I have an amazing seat 82 nights a year. Coach, with the, uh, with the roster turnover, how patient do you have to be with the new guys coming in, and you're a pretty good X's and O's guy. Um, would, would you like to be better at, at the end of the season? Yeah, you know, I think patience is, is, I think with every team, is probably important. And, you know, at the same time, you know, um, any coach that wants to, to move a team forward and have a team improve from the start of the team to the end of the year, you know, there's going to be moments where you need to be demanding and, and, uh, and they, the patience may be put on the back burner, and the, you know, the, the demands may may take front uh, front and center. But you know, I, I think I think you know the last few years we've talked about trying to be better offensively. And I think our defense it's it's you know what we hammer every day. It's what we practice a lot, and, and it's carried over to to the games and to the court. You know, can we be better offensively? Can we improve our efficiency? Um, and really, just you know that kind of big picture notion of being more efficient, being better offensively, um, you know, with, with this team this year, um, that's going to be a big challenge, a big, 
a big priority um, to see if we can do that from the start of the year to the end of the year. Uh, Terrell Thomas again. Coach, the NBA has made a lot of changes this year, a lot of changes and adjustments, uh, especially with starting the year off earlier this season and then eliminating the back-to-back -to -back games. But you having a young team, could you talk to me about some of the advantages and disadvantages of that? Yeah, first, I, I'm, I think it's a great move by the league, um, regardless of where each individual team sits and what the advantages or disadvantages might be. I think you know shortening the preseason makes a lot of sense, and you know reducing back-to-backs and eliminating fours and fives. Uh, there's just no doubt that the league is doing the right thing, and you know taking into consideration our players' health, our players' performance, you know what the fans are seeing every night, whether it's in the arena or on TV. Um, for us specifically, you know I think um, a shorter preseason with uh, a younger team and maybe more people to integrate, you know, could be. Um, considered a challenge and make it uh, where opening night between now and opening night uh, you know we're gonna have to be more efficient you know more focused um, as coaches probably be more diligent in what we choose to practice and not practice what we choose to teach and not teach um, you know as you kind of have a reduced period of time um, but you know I think an advantage for us uh, you know I think um, we're, we've been putting in a good, a good month of work already in September. I think coming out of training camp with a young team that's you know, well conditioned, ready to go, ready to play fast, ready to play and outcompete their their opponent every night. Um, you know, getting out of the gates and and get to the season um, a little sooner for a young team might be even better. And um, you know, back to backs are are hard on everybody. Um, you know, for young players, uh, the quick turn and maybe no shoot arounds and no prep time can be hard on them. So having, you know, less back to backs and less four and fives, you have more time to prep your team, more time to work with your young players, um, whether it be schemes or game plans or whatever it may be. So I think, you know, lots of people talk about the reducing back to backs for, you know, the veteran or older tech players. You know, I think there can be an advantage for young teams and younger players, just um, an, an ability to look back at maybe what you did the night before and then also practice and move forward and prepare um, whatever it is that that next game is. Deshaun Tate again. Uh, how has the expectations changed from a year ago for guys like specifically for Dennis and for Torian entering the season from a leadership standpoint? Yeah, no doubt that uh, you know, particularly Dennis, I think, um, you know, the expectations for him to, you know, continue his, his arc as a leader and his, his, you know, kind of arc as a, his growth as a point guard um, is going to be um, something that's important to, to his teammates, important to the coaching staff, and, and it's important to Dennis, which is, you know, um, at the end of the day, is going to, allow him to be um, an even better leader as we enter this season. And I think he's embraced that. I think he had a great um, experience with the German national team this summer where um, you know, they've kind of uh, shifted and adjusted to a younger generation. And you know, watching their chemistry and watching the way they work together and how I felt like Dennis was a big part of that you know, positive energy and positive chemistry. And, you know, it's different here in the NBA, it's different with this team, but um, he understands his leadership is gonna be critical to us and, you know, he's embracing that. You know, I think Kent Bazemore is gonna be another guy that's been here for um, a while, that's been in the league for a while, that, um, you know, his competitiveness, his, uh, his energy, uh, when it's positive and when it's in the right place, um, you know, he, he has a loud voice, you know, he has in the past and he'll have it going forward. Um, you know, is critical to us. And, you know, I think, I think Torian's still pretty young. Torian's still growing. He's still, you know, evolving. Um, but I, I think just the leadership concept in general, it's, it's a lot how we play. I think the group, you know, tends to kind of lead itself and there's multiple people that can step up and be leaders or have a moment, you know, a, a leader type moment. And I think it's been a strength of ours um, in the past. I think it'll be a strength going forward. That, uh, that the team and the group and their leadership um, is going to be as important as any one individual's. Any final questions? All right. Great. Thank you, guys.
Hip Hop since 1987.com.